It's really great bringing people from different backgrounds and cultures. And so having co-ops or interns come learn and having us learn from them is huge. They are definitely the future of our company. If you think of future leaders, where do you find them? How do you groom them? How do you help them grow? Then having some kind of intern or co-op program is absolutely the best way to go. So when they look back and think about their co-op career, they will think of Splunk as one of the absolute best places that they flourished and learned and really got a taste of, is this something they really wanted to do? When I think about Splunk, there's absolutely no doubt that the products that you work on as a co-op are considered to be real and valued. And that's a tremendous thing. Everything that I've gotten the opportunity to work on has been considered real and has been shipped and has been delivered to real customers. And I feel extremely grateful for those opportunities. For a company to look at co-ops as real people who have the ability to make real impact, I think it just opens the gateway for long-term success of the co-ops and you know something great for the company as well. During some of those times that they gave me like free reign to do whatever I want, I sort of developed a new way to control things in augmented reality. And that actually got put into a patent with my name on it. So I think that's like something, something super cool that an intern would never be able to do elsewhere. And during my two internships, I actually have two patents filed under my name. Both of my managers graduated from Waterloo and they were co-ops, they know what it was about. And when I kind of asked them why they go that extra mile to provide this incredible co-op internship experience, it really is because they just, they've been there, they know what they would have liked, and now they want to do their all to give that to this next generation of students. Hello everybody, alumni and friends. Uh, my name is Lisa Dussault. I'm a systems design engineering alumna and founder CTO of an HR software startup. Today, I'm going to be speaking with President Faridan Hamdalapur of the University of Waterloo and Jesse Chor, uh, another University of Waterloo alumnus, VP of engineering at Splunk. Splunk is here in Silicon Valley in California where I also live and work, which brings me to make a brief land acknowledgement. Uh, for Waterloo alumni like myself who haven't spent a lot of time in Canada in the last five to ten years, we may not have experienced many land acknowledgements. These arose in part out of the Federal Truth and Reconciliation Commission's work as a way of following the Commission's calls to action around changing concepts of land sovereignty. Living as I do in Silicon Valley, as does Jesse and our companies are, are based here, um, I would like to do my first land acknowledgement uh, to acknowledge that my home and the rest of Silicon Valley are on the unceded homeland of the Ramaytush Ohlone, who lived along this peninsula from San Francisco to San Jose. Um, and I understand President Hamda Lopper has done many of these uh, land acknowledgements. Um, Thank you, Lisa. Uh, and I will also... Um, acknowledge our incredibly uh, rich heritage and history. <clears throat> and while we are, we are not on our, on our campus uh, physically, nevertheless, uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are feeling that as if we are there. And we respectfully, very respectfully acknowledge that, uh, 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 that it is very important to recognize and acknowledge that the University of Waterloo is situated on the Haldeman track the land six miles on the east side of Grand River granted to the Haudenosaunee of Six Nations by the Haldeman Treaty of 1784. 
the land inside and surrounding the Haldeman Track, including our Stratford campus, is the traditional territory of the Atanawandaron, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee. I also acknowledge and recognize that this area is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis groups. We have, yes, you're correct, Lisa, we've done this many times with tremendous pride, and we will continue doing so as we, in addition to acknowledging the land, do so many things to ensure that our especially Indigenous and um, uh, and Black and other BIPOC members of our community, students, staff, faculty, they feel that they are part of, a great part of the community that will continue to build our institution. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you so much. Um, I knew some of that when I was a student 20 years ago, but not all of that, and I wish I had, but I completely agree with the sentiments. Um, let's bring Jesse on. Um, I know that uh, Jesse has an origin story um, with his career, with his career path that he was set upon, like I was, by a Waterloo alumnus who um, gave you a job that sparked passion. Is that right, Jesse? I, I, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I graduated from Waterloo in 2004. Um, I actually I still remember my my student number 9712451717. <laughs> So I started in 97, uh, and, and it was an amazing experience. Um, I actually, you know, in high school, I wanted to go to computer science, and actually my number one pick was actually to, to go to MIT. So I actually was like, hey, I'm going to go to the States, I'm going to go to school there. Uh, but one of my dream jobs was to work at Microsoft and, and other companies. And my high school teacher also went to Waterloo, and he steered me towards, you know, there's another school in your country that's actually a lot better. And, and so when he explained to me the idea of co-op and, and kind of this learn and I was I was sold on it. So I was in grade 11 and that really kind of steered me towards uh, going to Waterloo and never looked back since. So definitely grateful for the experience. And this is my first time ever hearing an, uh, a land acknowledgement. So I'm actually learning and I really appreciate that. Um, and I think uh, it's, it's great. I, I think it's, it's, it's about time. So definitely uh, glad to hear that. Thanks. President Hamdalapar, is, is this a common theme that uh, University of Waterloo alumni introduce other University of Waterloo people to their careers, to exciting jobs? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's uh, uh, just completed a great conversation that the, the, the power and value of networking and how we really, um, it's our job to tell the whole world, but whoever is around us, the tremendous value that we have here and a treasure is a university that is very proud to distinguish itself with thousands of other great universities. So Jesse, like you, I, um, I, <laughs> I never had the opportunity and pleasure uh, and privilege of studying at the University of Waterloo, but I, I ended up working at the University of Waterloo. Um, I made some important choices Stanford versus something else and other. I never look back like you 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 have. And uh, there is no right or wrong, but at the same time, to be part of this tremendous community and to connect it with the others. So your job, Jesse, to 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 continue the tradition and ensure that you know you now have. 10 high school students choosing to go to the University of Waterloo. Okay, this is the uh, this is the chain. Yeah. And, and I hope my son does too. My, my wife went to Waterloo as well. She's a math uh, accounting grad. And, and so, uh, yeah, definitely I owe a lot to the school and, and, and yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't change anything else. Did I you know you're your already. Jesse. I'm oh, sorry? Did you meet your wife at Waterloo? I did, I did. So <laughs> I'm one year ahead of her. She's a 98 student, I'm a 97, but yeah met her uh, uh, at school and, and uh, it's, it's been great. So you're already paying it forward, aren't you, uh, Jesse, and have been for a number of years. You're hiring interns at Splunk. Yeah. Um, yeah and yeah. Splunk was given an employer impact award to brag on you, voted uh -huh. for by students. Um, I know that was the gist of the video that played just before we came on, but tell, tell us a bit more about that impact. What, it, what is the impact and does it go both ways? Uh, it absolutely does. And, and so we're really proud of that. So it's the inaugural uh, award given to an employer who has the most uh, impact uh, to students' uh, experience. 
And I believe it was voted by the entire student body. Uh, and, and for us, that was the category that mattered. Uh, there are other categories, but we were like, that, that is the category that really matters. Meaning the students get to vote for the employer that they feel had the most impact for their experience. And so we invest very heavily uh, in Waterloo Co-op recruiting. Uh, we're, we're a small company. Like I think in the Silicon Valley space, we're definitely, you know, a small company, but we punch way above our weight in terms of uh, presence in the industry. And so, uh, so yeah, so where, wherever I've worked, I've always wanted to recruit and hire Waterloo Co-op students. So I think it's an amazing program. And we're really fortunate to actually start from zero, like meaning uh, I've been at Splunk for just over three years. And prior to that, they have not recruited from Waterloo uh, or every, any other, um, you know, co-ops uh, program. Um, you know, invested heavily in all this. And so we started from scratch and, you know, hit, hit it out of the gate. And uh, really, we're, we're here to compete against all the best of Silicon Valley. So uh, <laughs> and, and so namely Facebook, Google, um, I guess Coinbase, you know, all, all the hot startups. We're, we're here to go toe to toe and compete with them, meaning there's great talent Waterloo and we want to be a contender. So when, when students think about, hey, what are the top jobs or what are the um, companies they want to work at? We want to be there. And so uh, it's a great honor to, to be to have this award. And yeah, definitely. Definitely a great recognition. Right. Um, how do you think students measure their impact when they come back from a co-op term, President Hondelopper? And how does it impact the university to have students come back from companies like Splunk? Yeah. Um, this conversation could be over several hours, uh, Lisa. <laughs> um, the tremendous impact and value of co-op is just, you know, we can't, possibly fit it in, uh, uh, in a short period of time. But the best way I describe co-op and our co-op students is they are the blood cells in our system. They constantly, they constantly bring like blood cells instead of oxygenation and uh, uh, carrying nutrients. Co-op students constantly connect the university and the world outside the university. They bring wealth of information back to the university and from the university where, where they go. I mean, there are so many different ways of saying, look, some people will say to me, co-op is a secure job after I graduate. For some, it's a well, co-op is a source of income for me when I'm studying so that I could afford my tuition fee. But beyond that, the tremendous value of co-op is not just one dimensional, it's multi-layered, multi-dimensional that the most important part is it makes our institution a very relevant institution, completely in tune with the world demands, challenges and opportunities of the world. Jesse, do you see that in the students you get? Are they are just ready to go? <laughs> um, th yeah, yeah. You know, I'm obviously biased since I went to Waterloo, but uh, you know, even at Splunk and the companies I worked at before, we hire from all schools, right? All the top schools, including Stanford. Uh, and and <laughs> uh, honestly, I think there's this humility and drive that's unique to Waterloo uh, that that really sits above the rest. So, so it's not just an attitude about can do it, but it's also um, you know a, a typical uh, experiences like this, it's like wow, those Waterloo co-op students we interviewed they are doing better than the senior engineer candidates that we're interviewing. And so I hear that constantly. It doesn't matter what company doesn't, you know, all my peers that I know, about, like, that's a pretty constant thing. And, and I think uh, it's, it's the, the co-op experience accelerates the learning and experience to a degree that's just really, really hard to get anywhere else, even if you're working full time, because you don't change that jo jobs that often, you know, you get six co-op work terms, depending on your program. Uh, that's six independent work, uh, companies and environments that is really hard to get if, when you're full-time because uh, imagine six jobs how many years do have to happen before you have six job changes and so co-op really accelerates that and it's uh yeah, it's, it's a very unique thing and, and great uh leading question here but do you think that this impacts your overall ability to recruit and retain in silicon valley yeah it, it, it's a you know it, one of my hesitancies for doing this was it's it's our secret sauce and so uh you know, coming here and sharing that, hey, Waterloo is one of our the big, you know, it's a big investment for us. We hire a lot. Um, and so sharing that. Uh, but in the end, I, I'm, I'm wearing my alumni hat. Uh, and that is someone did this for me. Uh, it's my turn to, to kind of share, uh, you know, that we have this amazing thing here and in, in uh, reaching out to a fellow alums. I think we should do something. I, I do want to make a plug for Faridin. Um, you know, I've read a lot about you and I think you're doing amazing things for the school. Um, so in my last week of school, uh, right before I graduated, I actually emailed 
uh, the previous president, David Johnson, you know, the, gov the governor general. Uh, and I, and I told him, I go, Hey, you know, I'm about to graduate. Um, but I want to let you know, I don't plan on ever donating any money. Um, I, I think, it, you know, I, what I want to, what I'm proposing is instead of thinking about like uh, endowments are great and all that, but more importantly, why don't you ask the alums to invest in a school and build a reputation that's worth way more because, uh, there's going to be some amazing alums, amazing things coming. And, and I felt like, you know, to be honest, I felt like it fell a bit upon deaf, you know, deaf ears. But when I see what you've done and what's happening now, it's amazing. Like, like this is what I'm doing is exactly what I asked the president at that time to do. It's like, hey, build relationships with alum. We have an amazing network and we should really raise the profile of Waterloo. And I think part of the problem is we're too humble as Canadians. Uh, we don't we don't want to put it out there. But imagine like the most well-known schools today, they're in movies, they're in books, they're all these things. I think Waterloo belongs there. And, and so it's really kind of getting that name out there is, is huge. Jesse, this is, Lisa, if I may, if, if I may yep. this is wonderful, but I, I'm sure Joanne there uh, somewhere <laughs> saying, look, donating is investing in the university, okay? Yep. Uh, but, yep. What I'm saying, the value of what you're offering is is immeasurable. Uh, let me tell you a quick little story. A couple of years ago, I don't remember exactly, but um, one of the uh, companies that uh, I'm, I'm associated with is founded by University of Waterloo alum, uh, Calvin Choi. And we were celebrating the um, our listing of this company in the New York Stock Exchange. And I was giving the keynote speech at the dinner. There were so many uh, American, you know, bank presidents, CEOs, and I described uh, Waterloo and the co-op and all of these things. They, a couple of them, came to me and said, "Wow, this is amazing. We're just delighted to know. We thought that Waterloo was all these years. We heard about Waterloo, but we thought it was in Iowa." <laughs> <laughs> So absolutely, I think the power of networking and power of getting the word out, because what is it for? We will, the, to me, the most important challenge is to bring talent, great talent to the university in the form of students or staff or faculty and add a great value to their talent and come out as like um, a great big, uh, entrepreneurs, innovators uh, like you and Lisa. So that is that is fantastically important. It is the greatest, big, biggest challenge to have access and enable a, a talent to come to the university. Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> no, this is a conversation. But you're exactly where I wanted to go, which is to start talking about entrepreneurship. Um, it's part cliche and part cult in Silicon Valley, but it's also 100% real. Uh, being having the confidence to build something of your own, having the um, the problem solving and just getting your hands dirty ability to build to to start something from scratch and build it into a company is I don't think it's my imagination. I don't think it's simply um, <laughs> a biased sample. Aren't there a lot of University of Waterloo graduates who have founded companies and and joined small innovative companies? Um, I can. Answer absolutely, absolutely. Um, I don't know when you were in uh, Waterloo last time. Well, of course, not in not in the last little while. Lisa, the sometimes there are so many things they come left, right, and center, and I'm just I want to do some other things, but I have to. I have these you know really thorny issues I need to deal with. Sometimes I used to just close my door. I would drive my executive assistant crazy because I will just quietly leave, jump in my car, drive down to the Velocity in Kitchener. And there I'm among all of those that the, the brilliant, brilliant entrepreneurial minded students, they have already started their startups. They are there while they are students or soon after they graduated. It is enormous. There is no place like this. And I have seen, I know I'm not exaggerating, in thousands of universities around the world, there is no equivalent to because they combine tremendous value of their academic education with connecting it with some groundbreaking research, but co-op, they get to know the world better. 
it adds an order of magnitude more value and experience to their, their experience at the university. They are, they are confident. They, they are competent when, when they came to the university, they become tremendously competent and confident. They, they take risks. They're not afraid because they've seen it all. And those are the ones that will make a huge difference. Absolutely, it's in our blood like you perfectly represent here. Yeah, I, I want to add a few plugs to that. So um, so when I was in school, I believe I was in 3A term. Uh, I actually dropped out. So I dropped out for two years. I met with the dean of math and I said, hey, uh, and, and my, my good friend, Jeremy Cook, we were like, uh, you know, had a meeting with the dean. We're like, hey, we're, we're, we want to leave school. Um, we're, we want to do a startup. Uh, he tried to convince us to stay. Uh, but the truth is, you know, we wanted to do it, but we also weren't sure if we we're going to pass the finals the next day or sorry, the, the midterms the next day. And so uh, he goes, but I got an idea for you guys. He goes, you seem pretty set on this. Why don't you go down to the co-op building? Back then it was Needles Hall. Uh, and he says, why don't you talk to this person? Because they have this new program called e-co-op. And so uh, long story short, I was acting the first batch ever for e-co-op. And so the great thing was they funded us. They gave us a work term credit. And I just spent, I took two years off with, with my friend and we started a company. And, and so that entrepreneurial spirit, we took a lot of our co-op experience, but there's also a safety net, meaning, um, you know, I also met with Larry Smith, but th there's a reason why successful, a lot of successful founders, the third year dropouts, it's like they're almost done. If it fails, they go back to school uh, and finish. And if they succeed, they don't, they don't go back, but they've also been there long enough to network and do all these things. And so, you know, I would say my first job was mediocre success. Um, and, and later on, I, I built another one, which was uh, much more successful and was acquired. Uh, but the good thing is my uh, my friend that I did that first start with, he recently joined me at Splunk, so I'm really happy to have him. So the band's back together. But that that network that we have, um, my my latest startup um, was it's Waterloo alums, like like the core, it, and it's people I I knew, um, and I didn't necessarily knew them all when I was in school. So th this network and, and camaraderie is really strong. Um, and there's a there's a marketed difference I think between Waterloo alum and from the American alums that I see. Uh, and there's this community of, uh, you know, oh, we've been there, like been on a similar journey. We know how to connect. Uh, and, I, and I see there's even the, a hint of jealousy from a lot of the top schools where this is just not the same, that, that bond. And so definitely an amazing network. And I, and I do agree, like entrepreneurial uh, DNA is in the fabric of co-op. It really weaves in. Um, and, and so, yeah, definitely great experience. Yeah, it really makes a difference when you move and start a new job every four months, then, you know, there's not a lot of that change can phase you. That was certainly my experience. Um, I'm intrigued by e-co-op. What else is new since I was a student? What else is new, especially around um, co-op programs, entrepreneurship programs? I know that there's more investors than ever in the Waterloo area, more uh, co-working spaces, more accelerators. Am I right about that? Absolutely. Um, um... It's been it's been an evolving um, uh, enterprise, I, 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 I would call. Um, quite often, when people ask me, uh, "What is it that keep you know keeps you awake at night?" and my standard answer is, "There's nothing that will keep me awake at night, but uh, there are so many exciting things that will wake me up in the middle of the night." So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but to tell you the truth. Here, we have been absolutely the number one university in the world in, when it comes to co-op. The numbers are fantastic. There is no, like, nobody near us. Can you imagine one year you're placing over 24,000 students with paid co-op, you know, jobs? Uh, the economic value just in, in Canada is over close to $600 million. This is over and about, like, 285, 290 million dollars our students earn collectively. So those are those are remarkable numbers. But at the same time, I'm a I'm a sailor. When my biggest anxiety was I was the re leading boat. When I was in second or third position, I was say, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, you know, I'm I'm gonna lead. But when you're there, your anxiety is somebody going to come and pass me because I don't want to lose my leading position. So that is the critical thing for me. I don't want to drop to a second position globally in co-op. To do this, we have to walk the talk. 
of innovation. We have to innovate within co-op. So e-co-op, future of talent and future proving our talent. And without losing the tremendous meaning of co-op, and that is to give us that connection with the outside world and do all the other things. So there has been, we have co-op 2.0, Bob 3.0, and it's it keeps going. We have great leadership, uh, Nora McRae and her uh, staff, and uh, they are in constant, constant process of revitalizing and then uh, innovating within the co-op system. Our hope that, uh, Lisa, every single student at Waterloo will have an experiential education opportunity, but we want to maximize the number of students. Right now, it's around 60% of our students. Uh, I'm just, pandemic, we're going to just blink and then pandemic will be gone. Uh, they will, uh, we want to increase it if as, as large as we could. And we can, like over 6,100 employers around the world, and they are still wanting to hire University of Waterloo co-op students. So we're going to expand this as best as we could, not just in engineering or science or math, from geography to history to arts and social sciences. There are tremendous opportunities that we will make sure we'll do. So there's no sitting still, no resting on laurels. Nope, I can tell. Good thing. That's not in our DNA. Absolutely not. Yep. My expertise is comp is compensation. My current startup is in compensation, and um, I get consulted by companies trying to hire. Uh, and the complaint I heard yesterday from another CTO is that Toronto salaries are now just as ridiculous as Bay Area salaries, and it's just as hard to hire in Canada in in our, around Ontario as it is in the Bay Area. So I I think we can. Uh, uh, blame or credit Waterloo for a, a large contribution to that. The the caliber, the the demand, the the whole ecosystem of companies and and students and employees and ideas. It just it's 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 fertile. It's it's almost ecological. Yeah, in in fact, um, Tor uh, Splunk just opened a Toronto office, and what I did was I was really fortunate. But a classmate of mine named Tashawn Mills, he was a successful entrepreneur, had a good exit. I say, hey, you, you wanna you wanna start another one, but help me start an office. And so we're working on a secret project for Splunk, but he started we started a whole new Toronto office because of him. And yes, I could attest to that. It's thanks to Waterloo. Uh, and obviously he hired some really good alums as well. And so yeah, definitely amazing networking culture for that. So Jesse, next time you talk to somebody and you as well, Lisa, uh, talk about establishing offices in in, in Waterloo. <coughs> because in addition to co-op, we've created something we call the Jedi. It's not that Star Wars Jedi. It sounds fairly nice, but it's G-E-D-I. That is the place where we bring companies. They are on our campus. They are working with our students, researchers, and they're working on things that are not of their concern today, but will be of their concern tomorrow. So this is, this is how we are building the future. Uh, so I love to see so many of these companies yeah toronto has coming is coming to a choke point okay whereas waterloo the incredible magnet is the university and the university's uh innovative power and its students and it will be a tremendous tremendous value and asset to those companies who will either want to come establish their presence here or at least have a branch here how, how do we learn more about that is it gedi that's the guy. And uh, um, the name of the person you may want to write it down is Jagdeep Gill. Okay. Sanjeev, I'm sorry, not Jagdeep. Sanjeev Gill, G I L L. And he runs it. It is fabulous. I and mean, we already have a number of companies from um, US, from Canada, from Toronto. They're there, whether they're in AI or you know crypto or any of these things, uh, especially around data. Uh, they have set up shop in Waterloo. We should have done this interview a year ago. Then, then I could have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good, yeah, that, that's cool. I'll, I'll definitely uh, look into that a little more. <laughs> but for the past year, Jesse, you've been recruiting and giving job offers to and onboarding and managing interns fully remotely. Um, yep. One of the companies that it just, just doubled down on co-op, even um, as... Uh, some companies withdrew, drew back, um, Splunk doubled down, and please tell us how that has gone and what you've learned. Yeah, so so I'll start with the backdrop. So uh, when the pandemic first hit last year, uh, you know, we're in the middle of a work term, and 
we, we you know, sense that the borders were closing. Uh, and I think the schools kind of you know, sent a suggestion, come home. Um, and at the time we had a lot of students here in California uh, and a lot of them were debating, uh, should I, should I, you know, hole out here and hang out and, and then, you know, go later or should I drive home, fly home? What, like, like, it was a really tough time. There's a lot of questions. And my, my take on it was this is like, first of all, we don't know the state of the world. Second of all, I don't, I, I, I you know, I find like I can have the students live at my house, but I feel like it would really suck if they're stuck here. Like what happens after the work term and if they actually close the border? And, and so really we said, first things first, go home. Uh, we'll take care of all of you. And more importantly, uh, we don't want to burn your work term. So, so I saw a lot of employers, I'm not going to name them, but I named them earlier. Uh, they just canceled the jobs. Like, 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 Hey, you're on a work term, go home. Can't job canceled. Now it, it's fine. Like they, they got their salary paid out, but it, they missed out on a whole work term. They missed a lot of work experience. And so what we did was we say, Hey, we have a Toronto office that we're just starting. Well, we, we're going to give students an option. A, we can end your employment and just pay you out. Uh, or you can continue it, but you can work under the, the Canadian entity and still resume your experience. But we're going to give you two weeks off. So, you know, go home, relocate and then come back. And I, I believe every every student took that offer. Like they actually relocated back to Canada, resumed their job. And so uh, so at that point, um, I had to you know fight with the company a bit. They're like, hey, everyone's shutting down their, their intern programs. Are you crazy? And, and this whole notion of can a, a, a co-op program, intern program, is there any value in being remote? Uh, like, like, do we have the tools for that? So there's all these unknowns and like, I, you know, a, I knew the resiliency of, of, you know, the students, but B, I was like, Hey, you know what? We need to figure this out anyways for our own people, like our, you know, the full-time staff. So why not try it? Right. And, and so it was really obvious to me to kind of double down. Uh, and then, and then, and then we had to plan for the next uh, work term. Are we going to continue to post jobs or we can continue to hire? Because as you know, as you know, as you do a pipeline, it's not like instant, uh, interview post and hire. It's actually, you got to do it a, a term ahead. And so, you know, we, we decide to continue and grow and it's been amazing. So um, to compare numbers, so prior to pandemic, I think at, at Waterloo per term, we got, you know, maybe 1600 students apply, like over 1600, which is a good number. But now in the pandemic, I think the last is way over 2000. Um, and in fact, I, you know, I, I always ask about other employers. I'm pretty sure we're up there, uh, meaning we're a small company, but we, we have literally every term. Uh, this is over 2,000 unique students that apply. So the actual number of resumes is much higher, but like over 2,000 unique. And so that's a pretty big swath of, of the uh, students. And so I think our reputation has grown. Uh, and of course, that reward helped, uh, you know. Um, but but yeah, definitely double downing. And now it's no question. You can absolutely do remote work. Everyone does it, and at least most people in tech. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's worked out well for us. How has Waterloo adapted to remote work uh, for co-op students otherwise? Uh, we did quite well. Um, so Jesse, great big thank you and Splunk first, you know, for their, you know, believing uh, uh, co-op students and your enormous support. One story I know, one employer actually sent the students back before the border closed. They hired rental cars and said, well, just drive them, drive them across and just leave it there. Don't worry, just for, you know, we want, we want you to get back home safely. Um, do the math, <clears throat> the 23, 24,000 co-op students we place every year, that corresponds to about 98.6% placement rate. It's an enormous number. It is a fantastic number. So what would you think when that number drop, drops down to 60%? Ow. Ouch. Yeah, beautiful. Together. And with great unbelievable Herculean efforts of everybody at the university, but most importantly, co-op uh, co office. And thanks to the Canadian federal government and others, you know, their support, we are up to 85% now placement rate. And thanks to, again, remote co-op possibility. Without that, uh, of course, we wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, our students are adopting. And this is the beauty of, again, Waterloo Co-op students. They, Lisa, you touched on it. They, they learn resiliency. They do more than just learning. They live it. And that resiliency. And, hey, suck it up. This is how it's going to work. And I'm going to make it as good as actual uh, co-op job. And they, they, they do it. So uh, there is no resentment. They're grateful. 
uh, with a hope that they were going to keep doing it. And one day, it's going to be both. It's not going to be just, okay, we're going to go back to 100% in-person co-op. It's going to be both. And, uh, and both are going to be tremendously impactful. Yeah, yeah, I want to add one more point there. So uh, it, it really changed the way we think. So prior to uh, the pandemic, we did not do remote interviews. Like, like we were like, no, in, like co-ops are always in person, even interviews, it has to be in-person interviews. So, it, and, you know, I'll be honest, if there was a remote interview, we actually canceled the interview. It's like, like because the way we do testing, we do whiteboarding, we do all kinds of stuff, like we really want to know the candidate. And so we were pretty hard and fast with that rule. But now obviously that's changed. And so I think, to your point, Ferret, and like I think it's really it opens new doors, and new possibilities for sure. Like it's it's really changed. Mm-hmm. I would love to go a little blue sky and and think about the future of work. I I know both of you think about the big picture um, and what we've what what we've learned about um, working remotely and having highly technical employees and how that's going to change people's careers. Mm-hmm. So. In, my, in our case, Lisa, uh, I have all the indications that great majority of our students, either domestic or international, they want to be on the university campus. Okay, a large number of them saying that we want to be there. Regardless of whether they take their classes in person or they take it remotely, they still want to be on campus and live the experience of a student and do all kinds of things and network and grow as uh, well-rounded uh, students. That tells us that we cannot just have students on campus and us work completely remotely. We can, as we are doing now, majority of our teaching and learning is done remotely, but it will change. We will not abandon it. It will be a blended hybrid environment and this is a big thing that we have undertaken right now. We're looking into it with absolutely very open mind. Which jobs can be done remotely as efficiently and as effectively? Which jobs that cannot be done there? Which ones can be half and half? Which jobs will disappear? We won't need them anymore. Which ones, which new jobs that we haven't thought of will have to be created? So that's the big thing, future of work. Um, at the university, of course, this changes, this takes a different kind of, you know, spin when it's uh, like Jesse's job or yours. But uh, this is this is what we're looking at right now. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and, and, and I want to you know paint a little story. Um, just last week, I just saw a movie again, so it's been way over a year. They opened the movie. I took my son. You want to go? We sat in the back, felt safe, and, and so I was like, "This is how you watch a movie." Not you know, I have, I have a TV at home, but it's not the same. And, and so I think this, as humans, it, it you know. The majority of us, we're social creatures. We want to be with other people. And so this idea of completely being 100% remote, I, I don't see that happening. There, there's certainly companies that do that. But um, but I think hybrid makes sense. And now there's like talks of news, like remote first. Doesn't mean remote only, but it's kind of like this notion of, hey, we work like we're remote, even though there's hybrid scenarios. And so definitely there's an opening uh, of changing things in the workforce. But I do think, um, you know, not everyone's for remote only, like 100%. Uh, and certainly not in the school environment. I feel like there, there's just a lot to be said about meeting with people. I play hockey a lot, and so you can't play hockey remotely. It's just not the same, right? And, and so, um, you know, really in person and stuff is, you know, we're, we're social creatures. So I don't, I don't think that's ever gonna go away. Absolutely. In the new world though, are there more opportunities for Canadian graduates to continue playing hockey on good ice while working for a Bay Area company in a distributed team? It's called, it's called VR, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and there certainly are. I, I think, uh, you know, even we as Splunk, we're now like thinking a lot about, uh, hey, how do we hire more remote? But but there's issues too that need to be solved, like payroll. Because uh, if you hire people from different countries, different states, different provinces, there's different payroll issues that we need to handle, which is unique. But the good thing is once you figure it out once, you, you roll forward. And so the pandemic has in many ways accelerated or removed barriers for that. But, but there's certainly, um, you know, things to overcome still. President Havdalapa, are are, um, Canadian graduates, are Waterloo graduates seeing more job offers that don't have any move to headquarters expectations? Um, Part of it, part of the answer to this question is yes. But 
going back, um, just before the pandemic, we had about roughly, um, uh, uh, Allison and uh, uh, others may correct me, about 7.9 to 8,000 graduates every year. About in 2018-19, uh, about 5,800 of these graduates stayed in Canada, despite, you know, about, oh, you're graduating all these students and, you know, they, they go to the States or others. No, they do. They go and like yourselves, but that's fantastic. You are always connected. You bring a lot of value back. But about 5,800 of them stayed in Canada and 4,000 stayed in Ontario. So to me, it's the best of both worlds that we have our graduates going all around the world, okay? And of course, our, our, our greatest ally and neighbor in the States, and, you know, they, it's, it's, it's definitely the numbers are much larger, but uh, they are also staying in Canada. They, they, they do their startups or they work for great companies. I am hoping to see that with this new changed world, the borders will become a lot more permeable, that many of our graduates actually will be able to do this from where they are or go somewhere, come back and do all kinds of things. My selfish interest, I, I am I'm proud to disclose that interest, that the economic and social value of this, Canada will, be, will, will have a bigger share of that, okay? So I, I think we will see with this uh, that uh, we'll, they will be able to do this. As I mentioned to Jesse, the more we do here and the more jobs we create, the more prosperity we generate here, we will be a better um, country uh, of our own, but also we will, be, uh, we will mean much you know, more to the world. Um, so this is this is a big thing for me. I'm as a as a university president, I am tremendously invested in excellence, excellence in scholarship, teaching and learning, the excellence of our students and research. But I also see what will it mean to Canada first and then to the whole world in betterment of society, betterment of our environment, and creating prosperity. I think you're right about all those predictions, and I predict that also our alumni network will become more connected and more valuable in a more interconnected world and where people do have more um, border penetrability, whether it be virtually or in person. Absolutely. Jesse, how do you think about about employees, careers, your own or, or the people you hire or the, the interns and the future you see for them? Are they going to hop around from company to company? Is that going to be good? <laughs> that's, that's, I, I think there's, there's uh, well, in tech, there's, let's, let's face it, like, like Lisa, we both have done startups, right? So, so I think there's always this, like, I'm going to at least try once, right? So, so I think every student somewhere down the line, they think in their mind, at least try one or join one at an early stage. So, so in their lifetime, they're for sure going to have some kind of dotted line to a startup in some way. Uh, at the, the alumni network we have is amazing. Uh, name a product that's successful in the world. Name a media movie that doesn't have a Waterloo alum attached to in some way. Like even the Golden State Warriors, the basketball team, minority owner is a Waterloo alum, right? <laughs> like like it, it's everywhere. Uh, in the Valley, uh, I'm always meeting new alumni that are, you know, startup founders. And, and you know, again, there's this amazing connective tissue and it's great. I do a lot of angel investing and, and same thing. Like, you know, the, the yeah, the, uh, the, the network is powerful. And I, I would argue it's actually the most powerful in the world. Uh, especially in tech, um, it, because I'm in tech, so I don't know the other areas, but definitely in tech, uh, it's bar none. I, I, I'm very confident because I, I'll give you a thought experiment. Um, if you know, I don't want to do this, but I love my job. But if I was to do another start today, I can tap my alumni network and instantly fund it, grow it, seed it, you name it, like scale it, like easy with, with my network. And when I think about the students today, uh, that's them in five to 10 years, 20 years. And so, yeah, amazing network. Um, and, and now I think that's what I'm really happy with Faridin's doing is we're tapping into that from the school's perspective, right? Because historically, I think it was orphaned off. Like there wasn't really a strong connection to the school, uh, even though we meet amongst ourselves. And so it's like, kind of like, hey, you know, like we should attach to the school more in some way, but there's no 
there's no draw. So, so I'm really glad to see that this, like Waterloo is actually, uh, you know, especially in math and other areas too, they're actually trying to, to build that relationship. So super happy that it's finally happening. I've really enjoyed this conversation, but what have I missed? Um, I don't think that you missed anything, but if I were to add more, I can't emphasize more on the strength and value of power of networking, networking, networking. The more we do this in our family of right now, 210,000 alumni, and uh, it is going to grow. It's, it is beautiful. The numbers for this September is the largest ever. The whole world won to come and study at the University of Waterloo because of tremendous examples you've said. So that is, that is something that I wanted to reemphasize, the power of networking of our alumni. Can, can, I, can I add a closing comment for me? Um, I, I, I really feel the embodiment of this, and that is, uh, I had an amazing co-op experience very early. I worked at Microsoft, all, all the dream companies. And it's because of Waterloo alum uh, got me that job, right? So they, they they basically spoke up for the school. They actively recruited. And I see it all the time. Like uh, even I had an Amazon offer, the CTO at the time, Alan Vermeulen, he's a Waterloo grad, right? And so so like it's Waterloo grads that that have given us our jobs. So I, you know, my call to action is for all the alums out there. Hey, for for you, when you had your job, think about how you got it. Someone who went to the school got it for you. And I would say, now's your turn, right? Do your part. Uh, I'm trying to do my part. So whenever I can, I'm, I'm always like, hey, are we hiring Waterloo grads? That's always my first question uh, and, and, and Waterloo uh, co-op students. And so I think for all the alumni, please uh, please do that because it, it's our turn to do that. And, and it's it's uh, it's a good thing uh, and it's an amazing thing. It's Again, it's a secret sauce for hiring, um, but that's, uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's it's my turn now. Uh, but eventually, I'm going to pass it on to the next generations. Okay, it's your turn to do this. So, so I encourage everyone to uh, please do that. Thank you so much, Jesse. Um, congratulations again on the Impact Award, and uh, thank you for talking more about uh, your secret sauce, which you've just explained to 300 people. <laughs> thank you so much, President Hans Lopper, um, for uh, it, talking about the future and the present and the past with us. Um, uh, thank, thank you, you thank and thank you. you to everybody who's uh, joined in and listening. I understand we'll have some uh, um, chat in a uh, hop-in event after this, and that I am passing this on to Joanne for some closing words. Thank you so much. Uh, that was fantastic. Really appreciate it. That Lisa, you did a great job of managing the uh, session. And uh, Jesse, your enthusiasm is bouncing through the airways. Uh, to all those on, uh, on watching the event, very uh, grateful for your participation. Uh, this was a really exciting, uh, really exciting event uh, tonight because it really talked about the network, about the value of the network, the value of the Waterloo community. Jesse, so gl glad we grabbed you from MIT. You made the right decision. And one of the reasons I think that was outlined uh, tonight was that Waterloo alumni recognize Waterloo alumni, recognize Waterloo students. You are very similar. You're change agents, you're practical, you're doers, you're risk takers. And so I'm hoping for all those on, on the call tonight, you are walking away with a sense of how you can engage in our university, how proud you can be of our university, because we are making change on a continuous basis. Like President Hamdalapur said, we are making change. We have been making change, particularly this year, and we are making a real impact. And it's a, a sense of stay tuned because there's certainly more to come. We've really seen it in this particular year. Uh, Jesse outlined what changes are possible within, uh, within the hiring, within co-op. And again, when Jesse, when you talked about the e-co-op, I was really intrigued because that program has gone in all kinds of directions and is very successful. And Lisa, your view from the perspective that you bring, both as a founder, as somebody in the industry, 
it was really heartening to hear what a difference that the university have, has made. And again, I just reinforce, there is so much more coming, particularly as we've entered this environment and are looking at the future of work. Now, I wanted to talk a bit, Jesse, you gave me the introduction to talk about the giving back to the university. It comes in so many ways. It comes through your involvement tonight. It comes through your hiring of students. It comes through your championing as you have tonight, building the reputation, building on the network. So for those of you who are participating tonight, this event is to celebrate President Hamdalaper's decade of impact. He will be completing his decade at the end of June. There will be a virtual farewell event at the end of May, May 27th. And we would love to have you participate in this and contribute to the campaign for students that will be investing in our students. Back in a year ago, when our students were wondering about some of those changes that, that Jesse and Lisa outlined, our alumni and our, our community were very generous with their support of the students, and that has made such a tremendous impact. So if you want to help President Hamdalaper and help the university continue the support of our outstanding students and continue to pay that forward, please consider looking at the Decade of Impact page. The link is being provided in the chat, and there are two things to do. One is consider your support of our students. Anything is very meaningful and we're very grateful. And also, if you could put a tribute to President Hamdalaker in that page. If you have any selfies of your time with him, we'd be very grateful. Uh, please just put down anything that you think is good advice to the university and also celebrates his uh, impact. I will be talking about the, uh, about the, the question and answer sessions in a moment, just in my housekeeping. But first, I want to thank Lisa Dussault, BASC 96, the CTO and co founder of Compass, and extraordinary uh, facilitator of the conversation this, after, this evening. And Jesse Shore, BSC 04, VP Engineering Platform Experiences at Splunk. Jesse, you did an enormous, a tremendous job in outlining the benefits of hiring our students and keeping in contact with our alumni network. And Ferritin, it's hard to express the gratitude that people are expressing for you for the last decade that you have committed your life, your talent, and everything you can bring to the University of Waterloo. You have made it clear that this was indeed a decade of impact as a president, but your heart and soul will never leave the University of Waterloo. You remain here, you remain dedicated to our students, to our community, and most importantly, to our alumni, the 210,000 people who are committed to the University of Waterloo. We are grateful that you will remain involved in the university in a number of ways. And I know that many people are very grateful for the impact that you have had on the University of Waterloo. So thank you to all on, uh, alumni on the call tonight for remaining engaged and connected to our school. We would like you now to participate in our extended question and answer session with our speakers and with our president. You'll see on the left-hand side of your screen, uh, there's a sessions. So please, it'll take us a moment to get over to join you in those sessions. And I do want to put a plug in, not that it hasn't been an incredible opportunity to talk about cooperative and experiential education, but I'm putting a plug in for my colleagues in co-op and experiential education who are in the expo booth on the left hand side of your screen so that you can learn more about visiting them. So you can share Jesse's secret, uh, secret sauce and learn how to be connected with our, our co-op students virtually, physically, and in whatever way that life will allow coming forward. The next event in this series is Building Bridges from Waterloo to the Globe that will take place on April 29th. Please register online if you are able to attend that event and 
please accept my thanks for being with us this evening and for participating in this great celebration. Thank you so much, everyone. It's really been an honor and a privilege to be on this session with you tonight. Thank you. Have a, have a great evening and stay safe.